Hey everybody, what is going on, all of my beautiful souls? This is Jen catching you on DTWJ Life. Hope you're all well and you're having a great day watching this. If not, well, I hope that maybe something in it might help you or inspire you. Right now I wanted to talk about, um, well, you guessed it, it's in the title, um, but more so like what it's like uh, to be a digital nomad, but like in a sense to where like I'm not exactly packing it up and, you know, uh, I guess moving along, trucking along, so to speak. You know, I don't have like one of those um, buses that I kind of gutted out and remade as a home. I don't have an RV. I'm not living in a van. <laughs> right now, for some reason, I'm thinking about, um, God, what's his name? It's driving me crazy. But the, the clip on Saturday Night Live. That motivational speaker guy saying, you're going to be living in a van down by the river. <laughs> it was just so funny. But, uh, God, Chris Farley, man. Yeah, he was such a good actor and a great comedian. I freaking miss that dude. Anyway, I'm just, I'm just coming up on here to kind of describe what it's like to um, work as a digital nomad, not live as one. Okay. Yeah, this is kind of a, it is a lifestyle topic, but I would have to say it's a little bit more micro niche, if you will, you know, working as a digital nomad, not living as one kind of a big diff. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have to say that there's a great amount of freedom in, in doing it. Um, most of the places that I personally work at are like coffee shops, some restaurants that, you know, don't mind if I sit around and work off of their Wi-Fi after I've had a meal, um, which I do enjoy because those places not only have excellent food, but, like, the atmosphere and the vibration in there is just so freaking awesome. Like, I swear the vibration in there is just so positive because of, like, the people that own the place, the people that work there. You know, it's, it, it's like, a treat for me. Um, what do you call it? Another place that um, I tend to work at or places place is would be... Um, excuse me, airports, hotel lobbies, libraries, right? Places where you could just kind of sit there and work off the Wi-Fi and not have a problem. Really, like, they don't care if you do that because it's pretty much expected nowadays. Like, everybody is working mobile, okay? It's like a mobile working world kind of thing. So it that makes it even easier to be a digital nomad while you're working. It's pretty freaking sweet. Another thing that I like about it is the unpredictability. I could be anywhere and wherever. Love that. Okay. There's a great amount of freedom in that. <clears throat> Another thing about that point is you could discover new things in different places, like new areas that you venture out to check out to work in. Um, you can meet new people, start networking, perhaps, uh, you know, kind of joint venturing on something, collaborating, creating something, co-creating something. Um, that's always amazing. Um, one downside to it is that you may like say that you go to a specific spot regularly. You may have people kind of judge you a little bit, but you know, it's kind of obvious, at least on a psychological level, that people who do this um, are projecting, <laughs> right? There's like always something like within them that they don't like, or there's something that maybe they're insecure about or something, you know, like a fear inside of them that they kind of tend to project on you. Like, oh my God, like how, you know, what would I look like uh, if I were, you know, to attempt to make... Um, an office out of a small spot that I'm sitting in. God, you know, like what, what people think about me, like with me, I don't care. I just do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like exercising out in public when you live in a metro area, right? <laughs> you do it everywhere and you don't care what the hell people think because it's for your health. Okay. It's for you, not everybody else. If they want to look and say, Oh, that's awesome. Then sweet. You know, if not, then that's fine too. But, you know, either way, you just don't take that personally because, well, it's not yours, okay? Not your baggage to carry. Um, but that is one downside to it. Another downside is that you may uh, tend to come across people 
that you would prefer not to come across, but what are you going to do? It's the world, man. you got to learn how to adjust and deal with it. It ain't always freaking fun. That was a car horn. <laughs> it's not always fun, but um, there are ways of learning how to, you know, cope with um, the differences that you may or may not have with others that surround you uh, in areas that you go to work in. Um, no, it's not always easy. It really isn't. You, the only thing in that essence that you can control is yourself. Absolutely. When you go out in the world, man, it is not all about you. You have to adapt. You have to adjust. Okay, make the best of it, dude. Freaking have a positive ass attitude. Like, wake up that day, like, yo, I'm about to kick this day's ass. Okay, like, I'm about to rock this. You don't know. Wake up that positive attitude. Keep it with you, man. Definitely keep it with you because there are going to be people out there that kind of make you feel some type of way about yourself or try to uh, via their projections that stem from their insecurities. Um, or fears or doubts and worries and well good. <laughs> and, you know recognizing that makes it so much easier to keep a positive attitude because you recognize the fact that it's theirs not yours man like if you are doing the work on yourself or you have done the work on yourself all the more reason to stay positive because you realize dude like hey you know like I, I, I remember when I was there when I've been there when I used to think that way and I've come a long way, man. This is pretty awesome. I'm doing good. You know? Um, yeah. I'm going to be posting up more content uh, as far as this goes and other things pertaining to lifestyle. I hope that you all enjoy it. I'm definitely going to keep it under a playlist. I'm going to be titling it <clears throat> DTWJ Lifestyle, right? kind of simple, easy to find. So, you know, if you choose not to subscribe to me, you could subscribe to that playlist. That's fine. <laughs> Cause I'm always going to be adding stuff there. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be adding a heck of a lot more stuff there, dude. I feel so inspired and I thank you all so much for viewing me because everything that is going on in the world is inspiring me. You are my reason every season. All right. So freaking know it. You guys rock. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Another thing that I wanted to mention is um, the first tier on my Patreon page, which I'm going to link in the description. Not only do I offer up uh, um, one reading per month for continuing guidance, I also add a few other things in there. I'm going to mention that in the description of this video as well. Um, this way you kind of understand you know, what you are supporting in essence, um, monetarily, um, so that you know that this really is for you. Absolutely. If it is for you, that'd be really awesome. Yeah. Everything that I work on, I do it for you. Absolutely. I'm totally dedicated to this because I see why I'm dedicated to it. And you were the ones to show me why. So really humbling right there, dude. Thank you for that. <laughs> no joke, man. Thank you. All right. I'm about to peace out. I'll see you guys later. And if you have any questions about the content in this video, feel free to comment, drop a comment. You know, I'll always get back at you. If you want to leave, you know, a comment in general overall, or, you know, you want to tell me about your day or something, that'd be pretty sweet too. <laughs> Love you guys. Take care and bless it be.